you've seen the memes and you've seen the debunking. Personally, I never saw anyone doing this back in the day. No, I've never used a pencil to wind a cassette. But what's the real truth? How could so many people and so many companies be wrong about winding a cassette tape using a pencil? Are we just the weird ones who can't get it to work as advertised? Well, let's find out. First of all, I can't blame the people making the memes showing a pencil being used to wind a cassette tape because they're just following the advice given in the majority of owner's manuals for cassette tape recorders and players. For example, this Pioneer deck from 1974. It says right here to take up the slack, use a pencil as shown, inserting it at the center of one of the spools and turning it in the direction indicated. And in this Panasonic stereo system manual from the early 1980s, it says should the tape develop a slack, tighten the tape tension by lightly turning the hub of the cassette with an ordinary pencil. And in this manual for a Sanyo stereo system from 1986, it says use a pencil as shown to take up the slack of one of the reels. Also JVC in this manual from 1997, it says remove slack by winding the tape with a pencil. And this Pioneer deck from 1996, they even give it a little cartoon character saying turn the pencil to take up the tape slack. But sometimes they do hint at alternative options such as this manual from a 1994 Panasonic stereo system. It says use a pencil or similar object to take up the slack. Here's the manual for a Denon cassette deck. And they say take up any slack with a pencil or your fingertip. And the manual for this Radio Shack cassette player hints at how you can get it to work by tilting the pencil at an angle. They say it is a good idea to wind the tape a few turns using a pencil inserted and tilted slightly. Unfortunately, Phillips, who invented the cassette tape, can't help us solve this mystery because the manual for my Phillips FC931 cassette deck doesn't mention anything about manually winding up cassette tape to take up the slack. Here's the maintenance section with advice about cassette tapes and doesn't mention anything about it. The winner for the only company to actually mention using a big pen for winding a tape is in this 1975 Scotch cassette tape recording guide. They say wind on the leader tape with a hexagonal pen or pencil. When I showed in a video that trying to use a pencil to wind a cassette tape just doesn't work right, I got a flood of comments from people insisting that I was either using the wrong kind of pencil or that older pencils from back when they were a kid were thicker and it's just the new ones made today that are too thin and don't work right. Or people saying that the pencils in their part of the world work fine and it's just American pencils that don't work. So with that in mind, I collected all the old pencils I could find, some of which date back to the 1970s and 1980s and I bought not only what is claimed to be the world's best pencil Dixon Ticonderoga I also bought these Norris pencils which I believe are the most popular kind used in the UK and Europe and also these Mitsubishi pencils from Japan These are all the reference standard pencils I'm going to use, but it's also important to have a reference standard cassette. And for that I'm going to use this TDK SA90 from the late 1980s. Not only because it contains Bobby Lou's awesome mixtape of new wave music. We have OMD, New Order, Erasure, Pet Shop Boys, Alphaville, Yaz, Depeche Mode. Lots of great music on this. And Bobby was a smart guy, not only because he used high quality tape with noise reduction, he also thought of copyrights. He wrote, copyright courtesy of Bobby Lou. I'd love to play Bobby Lou's mixtape for you, but instead I'll let MTV's Bobby Rivers explain to you why TDK is the reference standard of cassette tapes. Most cassette deck manufacturers use TDK tape as the reference for their factory set bias levels. So, if you stick to TDK, you'll get great sound quality. Was there any truth to the claim that older pencils were thicker and it's just the new ones made today that are too thin and don't work right? To find out, I got out my dial caliper and I measured the thickness of all the pencils in this mug. And the thickest one I could find is this Office Mate pencil, probably from the 80s or 90s. 
and the thinnest one I can find is not a new one made today instead it's this paper make classic probably also from the 80s or 90s then I took a brand new Dixon Ticonderoga pencil and I measured its thickness and it's almost exactly halfway between the thickest pencil of the group this office mate and the thinnest one this paper mate so here's the brand new Ticonderoga pencil I haven't even sharpened it yet and if I try to wind the tape inserting it straight in like all those pictograms showed it doesn't work I have to hold it at a pretty extreme angle and even then it slips a lot then if I take the thickest pencil of the whole group this office mate hey look at that it actually works at least going forward but what happens if we try to wind backwards and we reach the end of the tape you can see it just slips so it's just barely big enough to fit the reel going forward and even then you can see it it slips sometimes so it's not perfect I mean it's better than the new one but it's still not perfect and I know some people are just gonna say well maybe this pencil isn't old enough after all I showed some manuals from the 1970s so here I have this IBM commitment to excellence pencil as probably from the 60s or 70s because it predates their striped logo so let's try that and it just slips it's even worse than the office mate pencil this one actually kind of works most of the time but this very old IBM pencil doesn't I also happened to come across an eBay listing for what is advertised as a cassette tape repair kit that simply contains two pencils and when you look at the instructions it's clear that the seller is just being what the British would call a cheeky git but let's humor them I zoomed in close on the photo and I could see that they're providing Amazon Basics pencils so maybe there's something special about Amazon Basics pencils that makes them work better than the other ones I've showed they come pre-sharpened which is unusual so here we go do they work for winding a tape Mm, they kind of work a little bit maybe a little bit better but it still mostly slips if I try to wind it this way yeah you can see it just slipping maybe they're a little bit thicker than these Ticonderoga pencils but not enough to make them work right and then I thought what about a golf pencil because some of these manuals show a very short pencil being used like one of these so here we go a golf pencil does it work and the answer is no it just slips and besides that goes against what Panasonic said when they specifically recommended using an ordinary pencil let's try pencils which are ordinary in other parts of the world for example this Norris pencil made in Germany very popular in Europe and the UK and nope it just slips so far even the best one I found doesn't work nearly as well as using a big pen because of this once you reach the end of the tape it just stops it doesn't slip at all but have you noticed one thing in common with all these companies that insist you can use a pencil to wind a cassette tape like JVC, TIAC, Panasonic, Pioneer, Sanyo, Denon they're all Japanese companies what about the pencils sold in Japan maybe they're the ones that work as advertised in all these manuals and when these products were being brought over to the US and these manuals are being translated into English they just didn't bother double checking it with an American pencil because they thought the Japanese engineers designed this equipment so they should know what they're talking about here we go with the Mitsubishi pencil imported from Japan is it finally going to work as advertised to wind the cassette tape properly without slipping and without needing to insert it at an angle hey so far so good now let's try going the other way and see what happens when we reach the end of the tape and look at that it just stops it doesn't slip at all so finally we have the answer to the mystery it's the Japanese pencils that are thicker and work as advertised in all those memes and all those manuals that's what they're talking about 
Japanese pencils, but when it comes to American and European pencils, nope, doesn't work. They're thinner, and that leaves us resorting to either having to insert it at an odd angle, which even then doesn't work that well, or trying alternative writing implements like the Big Pen, which works just as well as the Japanese pencil. So finally, the mystery has been solved. More importantly, as long as you stick to using good quality, properly maintained equipment and good quality tape, you'll probably never have to deal with a cassette tape that has come unspooled. As I'll let Bobby Rivers explain to you. Not only does dirt mess up the sound, it's also the number one cause of tape jamming and spilling. If you're serious about your music, you invest a lot of time recording tapes. So why not take a couple of extra minutes and clean your heads with a high quality head cleaner? Now what am I going to do with all these pencils?